This video is sponsored by Retail Me Not. Retail Me Not is the ultimate destination for saving money on everything you need. So how does it work? Well, Retail Me Not has a browser extension called Retail Me Not Genie, which makes it easier than ever to save money when you shop online. So when you're shopping online, the Genie is working in the background looking for discount codes and cashback offers. Then when you check out, any discount code that it's found is automatically applied. It's amazing there's no more Googling for codes, anything like that. All of the legwork is done for you. And better yet, it's free and it's available on all major browsers like Chrome and Firefox. All you need to do is visit the link in the description below and download the Retail Me Not Genie browser extension for free and start saving. Also, as if free and saving money was not enough, if you download the extension and let us know you did in the comments below, we're going to randomly pick someone who's going to get a $100 Visa gift card. So download, comment below, all of that good stuff, and let's get into today's video. So we're answering a viewer question. Isaac R. asks us, when people buy expensive art worth hundreds of millions of dollars, how do they pay for it? Like, could they pay with cash or do they have to go to their bank and wire the money? Just wondering about the nuts and bolts here. As we've discussed before, there are a handful of people walking around right now with a hyper-exclusive jet black American Express credit card in their wallets that they could theoretically use to buy anything currently for sale, regardless of its cost. In fact, the current record we could find charged on such a credit card is $170 million charged by a Chinese billionaire. But let's imagine for a moment that a super rich person didn't have such a card, or for whatever reason, they wanted to buy something worth millions of dollars not with a credit card, but rather with cash. The question becomes, well, could they do it? Well, surprisingly, in many countries, the answer is no, but there are some exceptions. So let's now talk about how the uber wealthy actually go about paying for things worth millions upon millions of dollars. To begin with, for the most part, paying for something worth a pile of Ferraris is the same as paying for any other item. The fancy auction houses and stores that we researched, they all offered the same basic payment options as stores do for us peons. For example, Sotheby's Auction House notes that customers can pay for any items they purchase by bank transfer, check, or cash, subject to any restrictions and legal limits. Further, famed luxury superstore Harrods notes that you can pay for any item that they have for sale with PayPal if you really wanted to. As for how the immensely wealthy actually end up paying for such items, most of the time they just put it on their card. Well, as you might imagine, the cards used by millionaires and billionaires are rather different to the ones that are used by us mere mortals. They come with a host of additional benefits that ensure the holder doesn't take all of their money elsewhere. Although the existence of these cards isn't exactly a secret, banks that issue them don't usually allow their customers to apply for them. Instead, in most cases, they issue invitations to the most wealthy customers. While the most famous of these cards is arguably the Black American Express card alluded to at the start of this piece, there are a number of similar credit cards out there that fulfill essentially the same function. Essentially, they exist to allow the holder to buy any item they wish, regardless of its value, and they provide a ridiculous number of services that come for free with simply having the card. One of these benefits is having a sort of personal assistant at the credit card company who can figure out how to make whatever you want happen whenever you want it. This might be something as simple as tracking down tickets to a sold-out show and acquiring them to more outlandish requests. If your imagination isn't all that great, according to one executive at Amex asked about the more bizarre requests the company has fulfilled on behalf of customers holding the Centurion card, he noted that they had a cardholder once call up and asked for a handful of sand from the Dead Sea to be delivered to their address in London. The company handled it from there, sending an international courier to the shores of the Dead Sea on a motorcycle. The courier then posted the sand to the customer. Apparently, the sand was to be used in a school project by the customer's kid. In another case, the cardholder wanted to appear on a soap opera but wasn't sure how to make that happen. The Amex representative managed to get the woman an audition for a role in such a show. Yet another bizarre request was from someone wanting Amex to find the horse ridden by Kevin Costner in Dances with Wolves. They were not only able to track down this horse for their customer free of charge, but were also able to arrange the purchase of the animal, and then they had it transported to Europe, where the customer lived. In any event, contrary to popular opinion, these cards do often have a maximum limit. It's just that the limit is informed by the holder's personal wealth and the relationship that they have with their respective bank. So, in the case of 
billionaires and the like, since any theoretical limit put in place would exceed the value of almost any item available for purchase on Earth, it's easier to say that the cart has no limits, even though the bank would almost certainly query such an individual trying to charge a billion dollars to their cart unless they got pre-approval for the transaction. In the events that a billionaire, for whatever reason, decided that they instead wanted to pay for something worth millions of dollars out of pocket rather than putting it on a credit card, they could just as easily also pay using a debit card or a personal check. As with credit cards, there's no set limit to the amount of money an individual could spend in this manner on a single transaction. There would just be similar caveats to the credit card payment method as certain transactions would be double-checked if they were truly outlandish and out of the ordinary for a given cardholder. And of course, in these cases, there's the added caveat that the money needs to be in their accounts at the time, unlike with a credit card purchase. On that note, for anyone curious, the largest known personal check ever written was for $974,790,317.77 in 2014 by one Harold Hamm to pay his ex-wife a court-mandated settlement after a divorce. Amazingly, Hamm's ex-wife originally refused to cash the check, feeling the amount was too small, given Hamm's then net worth of $18 billion. However, she abruptly changed her mind the next day and cashed it anyway. According to Forbes, the process of cashing the check went ahead mostly like any other, with the exception of the bank calling Ham to make sure that the check was genuine before depositing the money into his ex-wife's account. The largest known business check, on the other hand, was written in 2008 by the Mitsubishi Financial Group to basically bail out Morgan Stanley during the 2008 financial crisis. The total amount on that check? Well, that would be a cool $9 billion dollars. It's noted that ordinarily such a massive amount of money would have been sent via wire transfer, but because the day the money was needed was Columbus Day, a day banks are closed, Mitsubishi just decided to cut Morgan Stanley a check instead of waiting for the banks to reopen. So you'll probably note that at this point in the video, we've still not dealt with the issue of cash. Interestingly, even though a billionaire could pay for a $100 million yacht with a personal check or use a debit or certain credit cards as alluded to previously, they generally could not pay with cash. Why? Well, to put it simply, nobody would accept it, and even the payer probably wouldn't want to pay this way either, as there are a surprising number of very serious laws that are easy to unknowingly break when talking about handling larger sums of cash. While, for example, US law dictates that any debt, regardless of size, that the debtor attempts to settle with cold hard cash cannot be refused, US Code Title 31, Section 5103, when looking at buying something directly, it would seem no such guarantee to be able to use cash is available. And this is a law that seems to be reflected in many nations the world over. Beyond this, although most banks we research note that there's generally no limit to the amount of money a customer can theoretically withdraw from their account at once, in practice actually walking into a bank and attempting to withdraw a million dollars, even if you can easily afford it, is certainly a bit of a process. For starters, many banks simply don't have all that much cash in reserve at any given time, so a request to withdraw such a large amount quite literally couldn't be physically honored in many cases. For this reason, most banks the world over ask the customers wanting to withdraw large amounts of cash should call several days ahead so that special accommodations can be made. If a customer does call ahead to their bank with a request to withdraw an especially large amount of money, providing that they have the money in their account and can prove who they are over the phone, there really shouldn't be any issues in getting the money within a reasonable time frame, though understandably the more money you request, the longer it will take to be delivered to your bank or home. Further, most who do this should expect to have the bank look into what they're planning on using the cash for to make sure the customer is not being scammed. For the super wealthy, however, they're much less likely to face much scrutiny on that front, especially if withdrawing such large sums is a frequent thing for them. For example, a man known to do exactly this is boxer Floyd Mayweather, who revealed in an interview that he periodically has millions of dollars in cash delivered to his home by his bank, largely just because he can. In keeping with his nickname Money, Mayweather has been known to, at least in a few instances, walk around with more than a million dollars in cash on his person. Further, seemingly in desperate need of a financial advisor that he'll actually listen to, he was once observed flashing a bank receipt showing that he had over a hundred million dollars in his own checking account. On the less flashy and more humble side of carrying a lot of cash and keeping up with his overall cool guy persona, in 2013, George Clooney gathered up 14 of his closest friends and presented each of them with a briefcase containing exactly $1 million in cash. The star explained to his stunned friends that the money was a gift to thank them for their support when he was a struggling actor, reportedly stating, Listen, I want you guys to know how much you've meant to me and how much you mean to me in my life. I came to LA. I slept on your couch. 
I'm so fortunate in my life to have all of you, and I couldn't be where I am today without all of you. So it was really important to me that, while we're still all here together, that I give back. I know we've been through some hard times. Some of you are still going through it. You don't have to worry about your kids. You don't have to worry about school. You don't have to worry about paying your mortgage. All right, so going back to some more non-charitable examples, Mayweather is by no means an outlier in this regard, and numerous celebrities and millionaires apparently don't understand inflation and the power of compounding interest, and have been observed withdrawing obscene amounts of money from their checking accounts either to just show off or make it rain especially hard that day. Oh, and don't even get us started on Nicolas Cage. One thing they don't do with all of that money, though, is spend it all in one place because a lot of businesses do not accept that much cash in a single transaction. Along with the obvious issues of security and practicality when it comes to accepting payment for something worth millions of dollars in cash, especially large cash deposits often come with a lot of additional scrutiny from both banks and the respective governments of the country that you're making them in. In the UK, for example, under current UK money laundering regulations, any business or sole trader that accepts cash payments in excess of £10,000 has to register as a high-value dealer with HMRC, and accepting a cash payment of this magnitude without doing so carries heavy penalties. Businesses and individuals who are only ever paid large amounts by credit card, debit card or cheque, on the other hand, aren't required to do this, and as a result, many UK businesses will simply not accept cash payments in excess of this amount. Likewise, in the United States, States banks are required by law to report individual cash transactions of $10,000 or more to the IRS under the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970. Additionally, under current U.S. tax law, all individuals and most, but not all, American businesses are required to report any individual cash payments of $10,000 or more to the IRS, even if the money isn't deposited into a bank account. As in the UK, most businesses don't want this kind of hassle, so tend to avoid accepting payments in excess of this amount. Failure to follow the rules on this sort of thing comes with both heavy fines and, for individuals, even potential jail time. It is noteworthy that the relatively small amount of $10,000 as the trigger point has been something widely railed against in recent years, given this figure has not been adjusted for inflation since the law was established in 1970. For your reference, $10,000 in 1970 would be about $65,000 to date. Curiously, one of the places that doesn't specifically seem to limit the amount a customer can pay at once with cash are auction houses. That said, as you may have noticed when we listed the payment methods accepted by Sotheby's earlier, the auction house has a disclaimer about cash payments, noting that all cash payments are subject to any restrictions and legal limits. The auction house isn't exactly forthcoming with what those legal limits are, and it's noted in the book Money Laundering Through Art, A Criminal Justice Perspective, that the auction house has never really made it clear how much cash they're willing to accept at once for a piece that they sell. The same is true of Christie's, who don't even make mention of any limit on cash payments on official documentation that they've released. This is largely because auction houses in the US are under no specific obligation to report any suspicious operations to the authorities, unlike many other institutions that handle large sums of money. Because of this, an auction house is likely the only place, at least in the United States, where you could conceivably pay for something worth millions of dollars in cash and not have it be that big of a deal. It's worth noting that your bank would still report the withdrawal of the cash to pay the auction house to the IRS, who in turn would probably be very curious about where exactly that money went come tax season. Thus, the insanely wealthy person could very much expect to get a call about what they were doing with those funds, or at least their accountant would likely get such a call. Unsurprisingly from all of this, while it's technically possible to pay for something worth millions of dollars at an auction house with cash, in relatively recent history with so many other more convenient ways to pay, we were unable to find any evidence of such a transaction ever taking place, though presumably Floyd Mayweather has had some whopper of cash payments for things over the years, unless he's just redepositing that cash after he withdraws it and he's gotten the showing off out of his system. Either way, given the truly shocking number of laws there are concerning large cash transactions, opening oneself up to scrutiny from the IRS is something that even the obscenely wealthy don't enjoy. I mean, those guys got Al Capone, they can get anyone. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please don't forget to check out our sponsor who will save your money, Retail Me Not Genie. You'll find them linked to below. Like, subscribe, all of that stuff, and I'll see you next time.